So, a warm welcome to all uh, speakers and participants. Uh, this webinar, as you might have noticed from the, from the news flash I shared with you, um, it uh, will focus on how Nereus members, uh, in particular regional administrations um, and universities, uh, can derive benefits uh, for their organization and policies uh, from the EO4G initiative and its uh, online tools and um, training material. But for those who are not aware of the project and why Nereus um, is a partner to this initiative, I will give a very brief uh, introduction. Uh, technological progress and uh, other technologies, especially in terms of uh, availability uh, and accessibility of data, has made Copernicus one of the largest space data provide, uh, provider in the world, um, offering uh, more than 12 terabytes uh, per day. Uh, and of course, uh, I guess you know very well, it's our Earth observation, it's our European Earth observation system. Uh, aiming at filling the gaps uh, in Earth observation uh, capacities. Moreover, it is a user-driven program offering six uh, free services such as atmosphere monitoring, marine environment monitoring and others uh, to the public as well as to the private sector. Um, how it works? Um, we mentioned that it's a user-driven program, so the services transform this wealth of coming from Sentinel data and in situ data into value-added information by processing them and analyzing them. They are free and available to any citizen organization in the world. And uh, th this, th that makes Copernicus, uh, as I mentioned before, a user-driven program uh, where the user is at the center of the program's design and implementation and drives the definition uh, of these services. At the same time, um, Copernicus is a driver for economic growth and gives a lot of incentives uh, in the private sector, uh, especially in small and medium enterprises, to develop Copernicus-based uh, products and services and, and um, create, develop growth and jobs uh, in the downstream sector. Uh, but of course, um, so as, as you realize, uh, the program offers tremendous opportunities for innovation, growth and jobs. But at the same time, we need uh, skilled and adoptable people to support this change. Therefore, under uh, the program Erasmus+, Plus, which aims at supporting education and training, uh, and the new skills agenda, uh, the Commission in 2016 um, had uh, launched the blueprint for sectorial cooperation on skills to boost skills and education uh, between key stakeholders, such as uh, regional administrations, um, academia, uh, companies, public authorities and others, uh, allowing, um, uh, the, allowing the Copernicus uh, user uptake um, and, uh, of course, contributing to the implementation of the European Space Strategy. Uh, this blueprint um, has, uh, has, has piloted uh, pilots, um, six sectors, one of them being space data, geoinformation. And this is something expected because the Earth, Earth observation field is a growing, uh, is a growing sector uh, that um, manages, a big, uh, manages and analyzes uh, a big data collection, Earth observation collection. And this requires people that they have the right skills to drive the change. But to understand, um, um, but to understand what, uh, how this, um, which are the skills that the future workforce needs to have to support the change, we need first to understand what are the work processes um, or the space geospatial activities that this data will be used in. Uh, who are the actors? Are they policy makers? Are they, uh, are, are they companies, uh, the, um, the public administrations, educational providers? Um, and of course, how this data, this information um, will be used uh, within, uh, within the organization. Uh, of course, the quality of these um, work processes and the outcomes large, will largely depend on the right skills that the people have. Um, and this is where EO4GEO steps in. EO4GEO brings together experts 
uh, from the public sector and the private sector. Uh, we are a consortium of 26 uh, partners, most of them coming from universities. And um, they will they define um, new innovative uh, solutions for education and uh, training actions in the Earth Observation Geoinformation sector. Of course, eo 4 geo is an Erasmus um, is an Erasmus Plus Sector Skills Alliance, which aims to respond to current and upcoming challenges in education and training, um, bridge the reported gaps and mismatches. In, um, uh, in the education and training concerning the, the, sector, the sector Earth Observation uh, and contribute, of course, um, to the Copernicus uh, uptake. Um, now, what are the outcomes of, the, of this initiative? Um, there are many tangible outcomes and, of course, our uh, EO4GEO developers of, uh, for the tools uh, will better explain it later on. Uh, but of course, uh, the main outcome is the body of knowledge, the BOC, in other words, uh, which is a collection of concepts and sub-concepts uh, in the Earth Observation Geoinformation sector uh, and associated skills. Um, based on this body of knowledge, the BOC, um, there, are, uh, there is a plethora of other uh, online tools uh, and uh, educational uh, material that the project uh, provides and of course our speakers will uh, give uh, tailor-made presentations on this later on and um, a parenthesis on that tomorrow is a special day because actually we have the release of these tools um, now uh, of course all this information and these tools should not stay within the project should have an impact on society um, and who, 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 are, who are the people that are concerned uh, with this kind of tools? Uh, here uh, we see a few audiences that uh, EO4G is interested to uh, present uh, the material. Um, for the moment, we will, this webinar will concentrate to regional administrations and universities. Uh, but of course, there are much more, um, uh, many more targeted audience that can benefit from, from the tools. Uh, and this is where uh, Nereus uh, comes in and why uh, we are partners uh, to this project. Nereus is, um, is an association of 24 uh, member regions um, and um, 36 associate members, including universities, companies, space agencies, research centers, um, and more. And we aim at spreading the use of space technologies and applications. Uh, we act through three main key pillars, political dialogue, interregional collaborations, and public um, outreach. Uh, the regional dimension uh, undoubt undoubtedly is increasingly taken into consideration when, de when developing European space policy uh, programs and projects. Uh, why is this? Uh, because regions, uh, here in these slides I refer to a few points, but of course there are many more. Um, regions are key users and procurers of space-based applications and products and services, and especially by using um, the two space flagship programs, Copernicus as well Galileo and uh, Galileo Egnos, uh, they, are, they are able to maximize the impact um, uh, at, a so at, uh, at a social, uh, economical, uh, economical and environmental uh, level. Um, of course, regions are also links to um, uh, key stakeholders, uh, such as uni they host uni universities, uh, startups, clusters, research centers, policy makers, and that makes them a, a valuable channel of uh, information. Therefore, Nereus is, a, is, an incre is increasingly valued as a partner to this project. But also for, uh, on the other side, uh, for regions, education and training is a quite important uh, factor for uh, growing the downstream sectors. Uh, and they should, uh, um, they should be aware of an appropriate educational framework uh, that can provide right skills for the future workforce of their territory. So it's also important for them to be part of this uh, in this kind of projects. 
As I mentioned before, uh, regions have uh, broad outreach capabilities. Uh, and this is more or less our role to this project. Uh, as a task, um, we have to we have the, to implement five outreach workshops in our member regions to um, promote uh, at the regional level the project and ensure its visibility, but also to assure uh, to ensure that our members um, uh, will have an exchange with key user communities and uh, the EU for Geo partners. Uh, we have implemented so far two workshops in 2019, one in Nouvelle Aquitaine in France and one in Brussels in Belgium. Uh, but um, for the workshop in Nouvelle Aquitaine, uh, our uh, guest speaker Magali Paz uh, will, uh, will um, uh, give you more information uh, later on. Uh, this is a few pictures uh, from our workshops and of course you can find them in the follow up of this webinar. And uh, our next um, workshops to come in 2021 is in the Azores and in Poland, in our two member regions, Matsovia and Porkapaki. And we have the pleasure to host today the, the, um, uh, the regional representatives. And uh, following my presentation, they will give you more information about these workshops. Of course, uh, parallel to these activities, Nereus has developed a short report uh, a short um, a series of interviews with our regional administrations to find out what are, what is the lack of skills in their concerning their organizations. This feedback um, has been sent to EO for Geo partners, and today uh, the developers of the tools um, will provide you with uh, tailor-made presentations based on your feedback and you will have the chance to discuss with them uh, at the end of this webinar. So once for once more, I will invite you to stay till the end of the webinar to join the discussion uh, and to see if, if these tools and training material uh, can, can be of help for your organization. Of course, you can find more information about EO4Geo uh, on the website, eo4geo.eu, and uh, follow the project uh, in the Twitter account. Uh, now, as you see, I changed also the, uh, I changed also the template um, uh, because this is actually part of the web sessions that Nereus organizes, um, which, uh, which concern uh, the, the uh, presentation of our projects uh, and what are the benefits of these projects um, for the members. Uh, the next webinar to come is on the 18th of November, the same hour. It's uh, an Horizon 2020 project, Impressive, uh, which is about an online platform to tackle um, marine pollution events in the um, European uh, harbors and ports. You are very welcome to register. Uh, so this is um, our website, Nereus uh, Regions, uh, and you can follow us in Twitter, at Nereus ASBL. Prior to this meeting, I shared with you an online um, a, a questionnaire. Um, please uh, complete the fill in the questionnaire after the end of this webinar. And in case you don't have any any input uh, for some of the questions, it's okay. You can leave it blank. But it's important for us that you uh, share the quest the feedback uh, immediately after the uh, this webinar. So I stop sharing. And now I will give the floor to our first region uh, that hosted uh, the eu for geo workshop, um, Nouvelle Aquitaine uh, and Magali Page. Uh, and uh, give me one moment, I will share the presentation. And my question to, to Magali is, um, um, what are her experience in hosting this, um, this project uh, in the in the region. Um... Thank you very much, Margarita. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to participate to this workshop. Uh, we are very happy to be here. Um, and we Give have the me... Sorry. Perfect. Give me one moment, Magali, uh, to be able to share the presentation. Sure. So. Uh... Perfect. And the floor is yours. Okay. Feel free to let me know when it's time to. Okay. 
Perfect. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Margarita. Um, so we had the pleasure to host uh, the first eu 4 geo seminar uh, last year on the 7th and 8th of October, uh, almost exactly a year ago. Um, so in this presentation, I will address uh, the added value of uh, hosting this seminar for us, Aero Campus Aquitaine, um, and also why we think that education and training is a key topic when we talk about uh, space, uh, earth observation and geoinformation, um, and how we can uh, contribute as a training campus to, to this objective. Mm -hmm. um, so first, let me say a very uh, few words about who we are. Uh, because uh, some of you might not have heard about Aerocampus. Um, so we are a training campus based near Bordeaux in Nouvelle-Aquitaine, France. Um, we have been created almost 10 years ago uh, in order to address the skills needs of the aeronautics and space industries in the region of Aquitaine, now Nouvelle-Aquitaine. Um, so we address all types of training. Um, we have a very comprehensive uh, site with technology and technological facilities uh, where we train uh, through school education, uh, apprenticeships, but also continuing education for adults uh, who might be job seekers or already employed in the aerospace sector. Um, and we also train at international level because we are we believe that um, training is a key asset uh, when we talk about um, competitiveness of the industry in Europe. So we think that uh, we can actually export our training know-how to third countries. Um, so we use training as, a, as an added value uh, to accompany the industry in their export strategies. Um, so we are labeled uh, Copernicus Academy uh, by the European Union, and we are very much involved in trying to develop and spread the, no the knowledge about uh, training opportunities and job opportunities as well. Uh, concerning space and aeronautics uh, throughout our ecosystem. That's why we were very happy to be able to host uh, the meeting last year um, concerning the EOGO uh, project. Um, and the objective of this meeting was to discuss uh, the sector skill strategy, which was um, at the time being prepared. Um, and we discussed it with uh, an audience of very diverse profiles. And that was why I think uh, the workshop was so fruitful, because we had people coming from different backgrounds, uh, the industry uh, uh, cluster organizations, but also education authorities, uh, mainly universities, plus uh, training centers like us. Um, and this mix of different backgrounds was very uh, rich in terms of debates, um, and the discussions were very, very concrete about what are the needs in terms of skills uh, from the company's point of view and how they can be better addressed by education programs. Um, so this was very, very um, rich in objectives. Uh, and we addressed uh, very uh, concrete uh, examples of how this can be done. So it was very useful for all the participants. Uh, and the second day was dedicated to a study visit of our training facilities, um, which could help uh, the participants gain uh, knowledge about uh, good practices that we implement, uh, because we are a very original model here at Aerocampus. We uh, design our training programs in very close partnership with the industry in order to adapt always the contents and the outcomes of these uh, training programs to the evolving needs of the industry. And we know, especially in this period with the COVID crisis, that skills needs can evolve very, very quickly. And we need as uh, training and education providers to constantly adapt uh, how we provide these skills and how we train the workforce of tomorrow. Uh, because our main objective, of course, is to train young people who will be able to find a job afterwards. So this cooperation uh, with industry that is allowed by um, projects like eu 4 geo is key um, and should absolutely continue and scale up, uh, especially in, in times of crisis like now. Um, and this had a concrete um, uh, result for us because uh, we were very interested in the model of the eu 4 geo project. Uh, so now we are actually part directly um, of a new project, which is another sector skills alliance in defense, which is called Assets Plus. And it's exactly the same objective as eu 4 geo but for the defense sector. And this project has started at the beginning of January. And I think my time is running up, uh, Margarita. <laughs> I will shortly conclude. 
Um, so yeah, this um, cooperation with EO4G was a real asset for us uh, because it allowed us to realize the, the added value of um, engaging in such a project to engage concrete actions. Uh, and just to conclude, we really believe that in investing in education and training is absolutely key uh, in times of crisis. And we can see that companies sometimes are tempted to cut uh, the funds allowed to the training or to, to the reskilling or the upskilling of their workforce. But uh, we are trying to convince them to keep investing because this will be a key for the recovery tomorrow. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Magali. And uh, I invite you to stay till the end of the of the webinar, so uh, you have the chance to interact with the EO for Geo partners concerning the tools and training material. That would be very interesting. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, Margarita, I just yes. wanted to add one thing in ten seconds. Um, yes, yes. Since, uh, I will be leaving Aero Campus at the end of the month, so very shortly. Uh, and I just wanted to introduce my replacement, who is my colleague Sandra Pernet, who is standing here by my side, who will be in contact at our campus concerning Copernicus activities. So thank you very much. Welcome, Sandra. A big uh, welcome. Thank you. So uh, we move to the next um, uh, presentation. Uh, we move to uh, Matsovia and Adam. Um, it's the Polish region that um, uh, that will host the next eo 4 geo workshop. Uh, Adam, I will share directly the, your presentation. Great, thank you. Uh, and, and you can uh, start. Uh, it would be interesting to hear from. Sorry, this is the. Wrong. It would be interesting from you to hear what are your expectations uh, concerning uh, um, uh, hosting, hosting the next EO4GO in, in your uh, in your region. Great. Uh, thank so, you. For... Uh, give me give me one mm -hmm. moment. Thank you for introduction, and I will tell you shortly what are we doing in, in Mazovia, and later on what. We expect about next year workshop. Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, I think it's already online. Do you see the presentation? Yes. So Perfect. Let's okay. go Feel to free the... to to let me know. Yes, you can start. Yeah. So the first, uh, in order to ensure access to special data and to promote, for example, Copernicus data, Amazovian spatial information system was made where over 700 information layers are presented. Copernicus derived data among them, of course. Mm -hmm. so, as far as education, training and promotion of space products is very important for our region, activities is still not enough and we are trying to find or develop a popular product that based on Copernicus data. So please, the next slide. One of those products uh, will be developed in short future with the European Space Agency funding. You can see the long full name of the project on the screen. But the main goal we want to achieve is to get tool for automatic actualization of landscape values, tool based on Earth observation data. Then, after kick off uh, and test it in our region, we are hoping to extend the usage of the tool to the entire Polish territory. And this is ongoing uh, European Space Agency procedure. And we are hoping that the contract for that project will be selected in a few weeks. The duration of the work shall not exceed uh, two years from kick off. Uh, the next slide, yes. Another chance to get trendy and popular product, successful product, is establishing the business incubator of the European Space Agency in Poland. Of course, along with our partners from Podkarpatskie region, non-governmental organizations and other participants, we are doing that uh, to create new companies that will offer products and services dedicated to the space industry. And finally, please, the last slide about our expectations. So uh, we are hoping that uh, 
we will integrate with students, researchers, and entrepreneurs. We will get more ideas and examples of Earth observation-based tools and material, find new opportunities for implementation, and interact with EO4GEO experts, and finally establish relationships. So I think that is all for now, and thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you very much, and we are looking forward to uh, uh, to start cooperating in view of the next uh, EO4GEO workshop uh, in Poland, in Matsovia. Uh, we have also we, you are also invited to stay till the end of the webinar and join the discussion as you are uh, okay. the region. Uh, now we give the floor to our um, member region in uh, Podkaparki and Antony Yes. I will share his presentation. Uh, and he's, he will also reply to the same questions as, uh, uh, as Adam. What, is he, what are his expectations in hosting uh, the next EO4GO workshop? Uh, Anthony, uh, give me one moment uh, to share the... Okay. I think okay. you are able to, to okay. see it. Feel okay. free when I have to change the, the slides, mm -hmm. let me know. Okay, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm Antonio and, and uh, I work in the Marshall Office of in the Podkarpatsky region. Uh, before I answer uh, why you would like to organize uh, eo 4 workshop in Jeshov, I would like to present you uh, the Podkarpatsky region in a few words. Uh, Podkarpatsky is one of the 16 regions uh, of Poland situated uh, in the southeastern part of the country. It's border region of the European Union with Ukraine. Population of our region is over 2 million inhabitants. The region is rich in cultural heritage, in beautiful nature, unique in Europe. For example, the Shady Mountains, Low Beskid. But this is the one side of the region. The other side is a friendly place to develop entrepreneurship. Here are over 160,000 business entities of a various size, from small family businesses to large enterprises employing thousands of employees. In the region's uh, smart specialization strategy, we identified aviation and cosmonautics based on eight years of aviation in our region. One of the key players uh, in the area of is uh, the Aviation Valley Cluster, a world-famous cluster of the aviation industry, associating over 170 different economic entities, employing over 25,000 employees. Uh, could you uh, share the next slide? Thank you. Uh, Podkarpatsky is the region with the huge scientific and human potential. We have over 45,000 students uh, at uh, 20 universities in the region. Uh, one of them is Rzeszów University of Technology, where one of the course uh, is uh, aviation and uh, cosmonautics. In Podkarpatsky, we have also a network of regional vocational uh, centers. Uh, it's also worth paying attention to the Podkarpatsky Science and Technology Park, its initiative of the region, at over 160 hectares of the area today are factors and headquarters of companies of the aviation, automotive, and chemicals industries. Over 5,000 people, people found employment is uh, in these entities. Uh, Podkarpatskia is uh, involved in the creation, creation of uh, uh, ISA Business Incubator Center in Poland. Uh, in the national level, uh, Industrial Development Agency is the leader, but uh, in the Podkarpatsky, we are leader in one of the three regional consultancies uh, in, in Poland. Uh, would you like to change the slide? Uh, previous slides uh, show the uh, background of the situation uh, in, in uh, which Podkarpatsky is. Moving to our topic, in 2018, Together, uh, together with uh, the Polish Space Aid Agency branch in Rzeszów, we asked the local governments uh, about their experience of, of obtaining and using data from Earth observation. 
uh, we response from 20% um, of the entities uh, to which the survey was addressed. Almost 70% of them responded that they uh, had never used Earth observation data before. Mm -hmm. But uh, almost all of them are interested in participation in training and gaining knowledge uh, on the use of the data from Earth observation. Uh, as the areas of potential use of data, they indicate special planning, counter acting treats, infrastructure. Uh, why they didn't use data? They indicate lack of knowledge and skills and cost uh, of, of obtaining data. Uh, we have single entities who, uh, who have uh, got experience in this field. This uh, administration of the Podkarpatsky Voivod, which use air observation data for monitor treats, monitor treats and some cities' governments. Uh, what we would like to achieve uh, organizing workshop in Podkarpatsky? I would like to underline that we have a big potential. Many universities, a large number of students, a network of the educational vocational schools, a lot of companies, but also we identify a lack of uh, knowledge, how to use Earth observation data uh, in local and regional governments, universities, private entities. Uh, we expect that the uh, organization of the eo 4 geo workshop in Podkarpatsky in 2021 will accelerate the process of obtaining and using that observation data, give a new impulse, use of this data uh, will allow established contacts with universities in the field of introduction of the subject of using app observation data to the study program, establish contacts with the experts. Uh, this, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, it's no problem. This, this was the, the I think slide. you're at the end, Anthony. Sorry, it was no. my mistake. Yes, uh, please no share with us one line. It's, it's okay. This is the, the end of my, my speech and uh, my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anthony and Adam. And um, we are excited to cooperate with you in organizing our, our next workshops uh, in your region. Now we move on. Um, as Magali before mentioned, um, regions can use this project, uh, can, can be inspired by you for you and use it as a model project to learn and engage more uh, for training and education in the use of um, geoinformation uh, data in Copernicus. Nereo's role is also to uh, stimulate links between uh, EO4GEO projects and other relevant initiatives under the umbrella of Erasmus Plus Alliance. And this is the case for uh, Universe. Universe is an alliance of universities assessing the current needs uh, in the space sector and tackle uh, the future um, uh, gaps um, and uh, providing the, the right skills and necessary skills um, to, to participants. Uh, for this reason, we have here um, the pleasure. Uh, we have the pleasure to have the representative of this uh, of this project, Emmanuel Zenu, who is a professor uh, for ISAE Supaero from the University of Toulouse, uh, where is located uh, in the Nereus founding um, region Occitanie, and uh, he will explain us about the project the project and um, what are the long term uh, the long term benefits for regions uh, in participating uh, in this project so emmanuel i will share your presentation i have the last uh, version um, Let me know if you are able to see uh, the content. Uh, I think uh, now it should be fine. You hear me? It's okay. Perfectly fine. Okay. Good. So feel free to let me know when is so the time morning, to change everybody. the slides. Okay. So good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, so thank you, Margarita. So you have said already a lot of things about Universe. <laughs> so it will be uh, fast. We can go to the next slide. So Universe is a is a European uh, university uh, as a, an alliance has created in, uh, last year and and this year, but uh, which is uh, uh, which focused on the space sector. Uh, so um, and it, 
take into account all the social and uh, societal and environmental uh, challenges and needs. So we all know that the space sector is a source of uh, growth for the job of tomorrow on different scales, regional and European scales. So the idea was to build uh, a consortium of universities, which is a comprehensive university. It means that it addresses all academic disciplines, science, engineering, of course, but also economy, business, finance, medicine and health, human and social sciences, art and cultural studies, innovation and entre entrepreneurship. So the end of this university is to address all these disciplines. Next slide, please. So this university is a consortium to led by the University of Toulouse of France in France. Uh, in the consortium, we have different university members, uh, the University of Luxembourg, uh, Louis Technical University in Sweden, in uh, Poland. So uh, we have the University of, uh, of uh, Krakow. And as associate members, uh, EST Lisbon, which is already in another consortium, but who is for us associate member. Next. I don't see the next slide. Yes. So there is a lot of different uh, tasks on this university. Uh, no, previous one, please. Uh, yes, it's thank shaping you. the future uh, of the space sector. Exactly. So that's our vision of this university is to shape the future of the space sector. So a lot of tasks will be addressed. Uh, one of them is a big survey at the regional scale, also an European scale, of competencies and jobs for tomorrow's market needs, uh, which means that we will see. Um, a lot of industrial, a lot of uh, SMEs and agencies to uh, have a vision of what will be the needs of the space sector on the next uh, 20, 30 years. So we will, from depending on the output of uh, this survey, we'll create some new programs, bachelor's, master programs uh, for European students uh, and to fulfill all these, uh, all these needs. We will try to draw a vision. No, previous one. Oh, please. To draw a vision of a 2035 and 2050 for a space in education and, and, and research. The idea behind that is to create at a European scale the so called single class, single labs, means that students will, can, will be able to assist the same courses where if they are in, in, in Poland, in, uh, in Luxembourg, in Germany, etc. And single labs we, by sharing some infrastructures and experimentation at distance. Next slide, please. So we have many partners of this university, uh, industrial partners like Airbus, Thales, ACS, OHP, Sweden, UAG, etc. Uh, numerous SMEs and uh, all the national agencies of the university, the country of uh, the partners, and some regions like Occitanie and the regions also where our partners are located. Uh, we will have a, a board of advisor also on this university with all this uh, representative of so to. So to other partners, new partners, and Eros is already one of our, let's say, sponsor and part of the uh, advisors. Emmanuel, 10 seconds for two sentences because we are exceeding in yeah. time. And one. Okay. This one. Next slide is uh, we will make a uh, for drawing competence for the future. A big focus on innovation and entrepreneurships, and so all this uh, yes, all this focus we fully part of the EU for geo uh, environment. 
Uh, could you please repeat uh, the sentence? Because I think there was a, an interruption in the connection. Okay. Uh, just to, to share yeah, what yeah. are the links with you for Geo in very brief. So the links is a, it's a space oriented university. There will be a big effort to draw the competencies of tomorrow. So to have a, to have a, a students that are well trained for the jobs of tomorrow, mm -hmm. we'll focus a lot of innovation and entrepreneurships, uh, especially on the space sector. Uh, we have some specific topics like Earth observation, Copernicus open data and geoinformatics. We have to see how to concretely work with that, but it's already in our scope. And uh, we aim to, to, to work also with the uh, regional partners and, uh, and uh, European partners uh, on this project, which is still open and under construction. Okay, thank you, Emmanuel. And uh, we are looking forward to exchange experience and share expertise uh, amongst us. Um, and I'm sure, as you mentioned, that these kinds of initiatives for education and learning contribute to the growth and jobs uh, in the in regions. Yep. Uh, so today we are closer. We are closer to the presentation of the EO for Geo developers of tools. But before that, I would like to uh, in, um, to welcome the EO for Geo coordinator, um, Miss Milva Carbonaro, who is the director also of GSIC, and she will share um, from her point of view uh, why regions are key for these projects and what are the benefits for them. Uh, then Kevin Ramirez from uh, Climate Kick, who is uh, the Copernicus program uh, coordinator there, um, and he will share with us how, the, how he foresees an engagement and, at the long term with regions. So I'm uh, happy to, to give you the floor. Uh, just um, um, I remind you to keep the, the time uh, so we have... Uh, we have some uh, some remaining time for discussion with the members at the end. Um, yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. Hello, Milva. Hello. Uh, and many evening. thanks to Nereus for organizing this. <laughs> Thank you very much, Milva. Thank you very much. Uh, give me one second to share yeah. the, your presentation and then... Uh, As you were mentioning, this is a joint presentation with... Uh, the with Kevin. Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, I have introduced Kevin, and uh, that would be important also to share his view with us because uh, Nereus is closely cooperating with Climate Kick uh, regarding the long term action plan, uh, and regions will be very much uh, associated. So, um, yeah, let's see. Let's say that regions are key for the long term action plan. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But you are the best one to uh, okay, right. describe yeah. this so i give you the floor and feel free to let me know when it's the time to change slides so Milva. yeah okay okay this, as i was mentioning first of all thank you very much this gives us a very valuable opportunity to introduce you uh, for your results to an important uh, uh, to important stakeholders uh, and it will be very interesting for us to to discuss and collect the feedback from the audience, of course. Um, so you can please, uh, okay. Okay, uh, so thank you, Margarita, for uh, also for the introduction. As you were illustrating, uh, the main goal of your 4 geo is uh, to develop a sectoral skill strategy uh, to foster skills and capacity building in the space geoinformation sector. And this also in order to fill in the, ga the skill gaps uh, for an effective user uptake of Copernicus data and services. So what we did uh, at, at first in our project, upon the realization of uh, an analysis of the existing offers uh, and demand of skills in the sector, uh, we um, released, let's say, a first sectoral skill strategy, uh, also following, as you were mentioning, Margarita, the consultation with different stakeholders. Um, so according to this, uh, we defined our vision and our missions. Uh, so as you can see in the former slide, <laughs> you were too fast. Um, the vision of the strategy is to foster the growth of the European Earth Observation and Geoinformation Sector. Uh, in order to ensure the, uh, 
the uh, workforce with the right skills in the right place at the right time. This is a little bit our slogan, I would say. And uh, well, the mission, as you can see, is to ensure the strategic cooperation among stakeholders on skills development in the sectors. So in, uh, in two brackets, you can see sector skills alliance because actually uh, the focus is in the building of the alliance, in the building of the network of networks, and that is uh, functioning in the long term with the key involvement, of course, of all main stakeholders and including regions and academic uh, representatives. So, uh, how to concrete uh, uh, achieve this can be explained in the next slides. Um, basically, as you can see... Um, Give me one moment because yeah. it's... Um... Anyway, there is an integrated set of activities that are being uh, developed in the in your 4 geo set of activities and results which are very well, um, very strictly interlinked among uh, one another, let's say. And all these activities and results have uh, as a pivotal element, I would say, the body of knowledge uh, in the earth observation and geoinformation sector. So this is an ontology-based collection of interlinked concepts, uh, which are uh, basically knowledge and related skills, um, based on which uh, a set of tools has been uh, uh, developed to design, for instance, occupational profiles, curricula, job offers, and uh, uh, other functionalities that will be deeper illustrated later on today by our colleagues developers in the in u 4 u project. Um, then um, the uh, concepts and tools can then be used to uh, design sector-specific uh, curricula and innovative training based on user needs in specific scenarios. Um, so, uh, it is uh, interesting to know that uh, in EU4GO, occupational profiles are being described according to an analysis of 32 business processes um, following the identification of tasks uh, and uh, related skills needs um, specific to uh, each, uh, let's say, business process. Uh, and this in the different subsectors, in the three subsectors addressed by your 4 geo <clears throat> which are, sorry, climate change, integrated application, and smart cities. Uh, in fact, uh, in your 4 geo we define uh, the occupational profiles as the knowledge and skills required for completing tasks which are linked to a specific job and, of course, also the workflows. Um, in, a, in a specific job. And then it's also important to say that the curricula developed in your 4GO are intended to cover, in principle, both vocational training and academic education. Uh, next, please. Uh, so this is, uh, in this uh, diagram, you can see very, very shortly how, uh, what the, the methodology, let's say, that I was explaining you before. Um, so, starting from the analysis of the business processes, a set of activities is identified, which are performed, activities, tasks, which are performed in each business process. And to perform these activities, uh, the, the, the worker, that, uh, the professional must uh, have uh, specific knowledge and skills. How do they gather, do they uh, reach uh, to have this knowledge and skills? Uh, through uh, curricula designed in order to achieve specific learning outcomes. And as I was mentioning, the curricula designed in eo 4 geo are uh, linked to specific occupational profiles that has been, have been identified. Uh, next, please. So, very shortly, as I was mentioning, uh, in um, in, in eo 4 geo when we speak about curricula, we don't mean exactly the, tradi in the traditional academic way. This is, uh, let's say, a, um, could be, uh, but uh, we also um, consider short courses, for instance, for people upskilling or reskilling. And uh, as I was mentioning, vocational education and training and also high school education. So um, a variety of training programs addressing different AQL level, levels. Uh, so, next, summarizing, um, in eu 4 geo there is a, 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 a complex interplay of activities. Uh, and you can see here in this slide that there is uh, always the link with the body of knowledge, uh, based on which uh, we, um, 
for instance, uh, we can have a training material um, developed uh, in such a way that it is annotated using uh, the body of knowledge concepts, the concepts in the body of knowledge. And this is particularly important because this can ensure to have, uh, for instance, later on, uh, search functionality or to be able to extract uh, uh, some uh, uh, what some training material relate to. Um, and uh, important to say that the training material catalog is also being developed and will be accessible soon from the project uh, website. Um, uh, of course, uh, all these, uh, all the activities that you can see uh, uh, summarized here, uh, which includes the tools that will be let, um, soon, uh, let's say, uh, deeper illustrated by my colleagues, the curricula develop, developed based on, on the analysis of occupational profile, the training material developed um, uh, in order to match the needs uh, that are arise, uh, that arose from those occupational profiles. And later on, the training actions that are being uh, organized in the project also to test a little bit of this methodology. Um, and uh, which will use the training material which is being developed also uh, within u 4 g uh, All this is very much linked to, uh, to the long-term sustainability of the project and the long-term action plan, because all uh, the results of the project are being, uh, let's say, uh, developed in order to ensure that they are open, accessible and sustainable in the, in the long term. Um, so next, next slide, please. Uh, this is more or less, uh, but then I will leave the floor to my colleague, uh, the, the place where the, the regions and in general the stakeholders steps in um, in order to really guarantee an impact of uh, uh, the project results and how you guarantee this impact, having them adopted uh, concretely at the local and regional level in training initiative or uh, by using the tools to design curricula that later on can be uh, provided in vocational or academic set, uh, settings and so on. So these are the key that you can see here, this, the key uh, words that we are uh, uh, bearing in mind for the long-term uh, sustainability of the project. So the awareness to raise awareness and increase the overall visibility of uh, uh, the, the results achieved, uh, the attraction in terms of attracting new stakeholders for the future exploitation of uh, uh, the different uh, products, uh, engagement, uh, so the engagement of the user community, the consolidation of our of the alliance itself, the, the what we call the network of network with whom to engage, and of course the maintenance of the of the alliance of the community built as a, as a key element for the long-term action plan. So regions here are important both as beneficiaries of uh, the results, but also as main actors uh, to, uh, as I was saying, ensure the actual adoption of the EO4G solutions at the regional level. Uh, but now uh, to, to go deeper in this, uh, in this uh, analysis, I'm leaving the floor to the colleague from Climate Kick, Kevin Ramirez, who is in charge for the long-term uh, sustainability of the project. So Kevin, the floor is yours. Kevin? Yes. You have to unmute yourself. Yes. I perfect. just unmuted. So I will, I will use uh, my four minutes and 37 seconds uh, in the best uh, manner. I think if even slide. less. If it could be less, that would be perfect. <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll, I'll be very fast. So if you can move to the next uh, slide. So thank you for organizing the rest. Uh, we're very happy to present this. So I, I think I, I will just provide a, a very brief summary of, of the context on which this uh, um, project came to exist. And it's, uh, of course, based on, the, on, on, on improving the skills gap that is currently present at the European level. And I think this is actually becoming more relevant considering the, the current context of the COVID-19, which accelerated a transition to a really digital world and as, I, um, as we know that um, in order to accelerate and to really recover from the from the crisis we, we need to enhance uh, these um, IT skills or, and, and the use of our preservation data and this is actually reflected on several uh, 
uh, calls and initiatives by the European Commission, like the European Green Deal, the European Digital Strategy. And this is actually just provide the context of the you know higher level. So the next uh, slide. And then this actually specifically came to uh, the development of the um, blueprint for sectoral cooperation and skills. And as you can see, there are the six uh, specific um, uh, sectors uh, for the first wave, uh, the space to information being one of those. And I think this body comes really re relevant, uh, specifically highlighted in the document of, of the blueprint is, is the importance of the, the rollout at the national and regional level. Uh, and uh, I think this is the, the, the key message that we would like to emphasize uh, uh, here, the, the importance of really um, um, engaging with you at different levels, of course, understanding the limitations and the strengths of different regions. If we can go for the next slide. So I just uh, here just wanted to really provide a, a link between the the, the the blueprint specific on, on the geo information that is actually translated into the, the project called EO for Geo. And then um, as you can see is is composed of a, a whole range of different organizations that would enable not only the delivery of the project resource within the time frame of the project, but also with the interesting partners from coming from the private sector, the SMEs, organizations uh, which work at the regional level like Nereus and ERSC, and organizations with pan-European presence like Climate Kick and other organizations. So I think this is important to really um, provide the necessary support for the long-term impact of the project and assure that the, the, the results reach the regions in an effective and, and really um, a relevant manner to everyone. So if we go for the next uh, slide. And this is just, again, an overview of the project, of the project results. And what I wanted to say here specifically is that regardless of the level of development of your region in the use of uh, geospatial and air observation and GIS remote sensing data, what is important to emphasize here is that uh, within our project, within E4G, or you will be able to find tools that support uh, the progression of your activities in this domain. Because, for example, if you're already advanced and if you really um, um, want to upskill or reskill your tax for your, your workforce, so you can uh, perhaps uh, use the curriculum um, um, training action, sorry, the training actions, the training material, or if you want to develop a specific role, so you can uh, design this, this type of uh, roles and using the curriculum design tool. But if, if you just wants to understand where you stand, we foresee the creation of observatory and the demand and offer the skills. So it's a, it's, it's a good opportunity to really compare yourself with the rest of the regions and assess how you can start taking the next steps to progress um, and build strengths and uh, competences on this domain. Uh, I have 13 seconds left, so I would go for the next. Uh... Yeah, this is just an overview of the long term action plan. Not much to say here. Okay. Uh, and I think the main Which thing one? is, is, is uh, yeah, is the corporate action. Uh, it's my alarm saying that my time is up. Let me cancel it. Somehow. Good, Kevin. <laughs> okay, my okay. time is up. One, so message, just, uh, one last message. One last, last message, message. Is, uh, is, is the importance of action and engagement with to the regions. regions. Yeah. Is, is the key mm -hmm. message, and we will be reaching out to Nereos, Clame Kick, and the whole group working on the sustainability of the project. So thank you very much, and we are looking forward to working with all the regions effectively to push this project to the next level. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin, very much. And I hope you stay till the end to join the discussion uh, to the Q&A. Uh, so very briefly, I go now to the main part of our uh, of our webinar, which is the presentation of the tools for our regions and universities. And of course, the companies who are present here. Uh, I will remind you to give your time. So we have uh, much available time for the Q&A at the end. Uh, I will introduce you now uh, the eo 4 geo developers of the tools, Martina Gorska from Jena University, Rob Lemons from Twente University, Aida Mont from Muriach from Universität uh, Jam Primer, sorry for my pronunciation, Andrea, and Andreas Kazanzidis from the University of Patras. Um, uh, I think we start with, uh, uh, with Martina. 
and the body of knowledge and uh, you may introduce already yourself and in the meanwhile in the meanwhile i share the presentation okay thank you margarita for for introduction good afternoon everyone uh, from my side uh, so in the next um, next slides you will see the examples of of the of the products that you could uh, see in the uh, presentation from kevin uh, so not only on the slide but really in real uh, real life how we can use it but i will start with explaining uh, what a uh, body of knowledge is uh, so I will start, I will present you, uh, as uh, Milva called it, pivotal element of EO4GO, or you can say backbone of the EO4GO products and tools, uh, the body of knowledge uh, short book. So let's start by uh, giving you a definition of a body of knowledge. A body of knowledge is a formal description of domain. It represents a combination of knowledge, skills, and competences required to master a particular area or profession. It describes uh, relevant theories, methods, technologies, and skills in the form of a complete set of concepts and concepts that are organized in a structured way. Uh, the body of knowledge concepts are interrelated using relations that build the structure of the ontology. And you can see uh, on the right hand side on the slide, concepts uh, represented by circles and uh, relations that uh, build the ontology uh, represented by lines. Next slide, please. Yes, you, you can continue. It okay, <laughs> so yeah. EO for GEO uh, body of knowledge uh, builds on a revision of the previous initiatives, uh, just to, to give you some words of history. But uh, they were focused mainly on academic description of the geographic information, geo information aspects. Within the EO for GEO project, we have added detailed Earth observation part as well as market oriented perspective, which was very important for us just to not only to present an academic uh, body of knowledge, but also um, and market oriented perspective. Um, and all three aspects, uh, uh, the geo information, uh, Earth observation and market um, perspective make up the EO4GEO body of knowledge, which currently consists of approximately 1,000 concepts, so descriptions of method, technologies, theories, uh, including skills related to those uh, methods and uh, theories. And uh, all the concepts uh, are developed or are currently being developed by the experts. Uh, it means professionals, researchers, and practitioners in the earth observation and geoinformation sector. And the whole rich collection of the concepts uh, will be publicly available from tomorrow, uh, October 21st. So you are all welcome to, uh, to, to play with the body of knowledge and to familiarize yourself uh, what exactly the body of knowledge is. Next slide, please. Uh, why, uh, and this is, I think, the key question, why it is important for a geospatial sector or um, Earth observation uh, geoinformation sector to have a body of knowledge. Um, BOC can be used by different stakeholders um, active uh, in, in our sector, uh, also by NREO's members, by regions. Uh, it represents a rich collection of knowledge skills in a form of concepts required to complete a job or task in the sector. Uh, it can be used to guide work and education practice. Uh, it represents common vocabulary for our domain, um, and this is very important. So we use the, the common vocabulary. We establish a common vocabulary uh, to, to, to join towards academic and private. And uh, this common vocabulary is used as a backbone in the EO4GEO products. It forms a foundation for developing the curriculum for most professional program uh, programs and, and uh, sorry, vocational training. Uh, it can be used to close the gap between supply of demand for education and training in the sector. And um, 
it supports workforce recruitment and job assessments as well. It can be used for employee screening, defining op occupational profiles, what was already presented by Milva, uh, for job offer description and many, many more. And uh, we are also open for, for new ideas and new corporations. Uh, last slide, please. Next one. Uh, so all the mentioned possibilities in which the knowledge and skills contained in the body of knowledge can be used for are illustrated by the EO4GO tools. First, we have tools that are used for maintaining and editing the body of knowledge and uh, the living textbook. Mm, as well Martina, as... So, Martina, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, do you have a full view of the presentation? Because I have received a message from a participant that he cannot. Uh, can you view the, your presentation? Yeah, I can see it. It, it works fine. OK, please yeah, continue. It works fine. Mm -hmm. uh, so first we have um, uh, tools uh, that are used for maintaining and editing the book. and. Uh, um, the living textbook and you will hear about this tool uh, in the next presentation as well as tool to visualize the content of the body of knowledge and you will see this uh, also in the next presentations um, so and second we have end user tools uh, for example tour, tool for curriculum design uh, body of knowledge annotation tool job offer tool the body of knowledge matching tool the body of knowledge content is also used uh, to annotate the rich collection of educational offers and training and learning materials developed by the EO4GEO partners. And these tools and planned training activities will be presented in the following slides. So this is all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Martina, for your presentation. And before I go to Rob, um, I will just mention that our speakers today, the developers of the tools, uh, provide, um, Hello everyone, provide, my name is Hope Lemons. I'm a member of the We provide presentations uh, that answers the following questions. What is the tool about? Who is concerned from this tool? How you can use it and what are the benefits? So all the presentations are structured based on these questions. So it's easier for you at the end to, to answer questions. Rob, you may introduce yourself and you, when you are ready, I can share your video, your, your recorded presentation. Thank you, Margarita. Yes, um, my name is Rob Lemons. I, I've recorded this video for you, uh, but I'm here also live uh, to answer your questions <laughs> afterwards. So uh, please play the video, uh, Margarita. Perfect. Thank you, Rob. Let me know if you have it. First of Twente, Faculty of Geoinformation Science and Earth Observation. I'm going to show you how we... Hello, everyone. My name is Rob Lemons. I'm a member of the University of Twente, Faculty of Geoinformation Science and Earth Observation. I'm going to show you how we are creating the body of knowledge within the eo 4 geo project. The body of knowledge actually contains concepts, and these concepts are the building blocks for our tools and products, uh, such as curricula, uh, job profiles, job offers, etc. We are using a tool called the Living Textbook to create these concepts, and I'm going to show you what this Living Textbook is about. The Living Textbook is a tool that is used to create a conceptual visualization of a knowledge domain and share it with educators, researchers, and anyone who would like to understand that domain. In some way, it works as an advanced way of making a collaborative mind map. We call this a body of knowledge. In the case of the eo 4 project, we are visualizing the domain of geographic information science and technology and Earth observation. This tool is built in such a way that web applications can reuse the information via web interfaces. In this way, web application developers can create their own application on top of this information. So, the potential users of this tool are educators and researchers who can both produce and consume the content of the body of knowledge, or any body of knowledge. The benefit of this tool is that it provides a web-based environment for group, a group of experts to discuss and agree on definitions, cross-references, and the demarcation of the domain, etc and that consumers of the content always see the latest representation of the created content. At our university, we have created the Living Textbook uh, originally for uh, educational purposes, but we use it now throughout uh, our uh, education and projects, also for knowledge transfer. So basically, we have turned our original 
core education book into a digital environment, as you see uh, below in the middle. So what students see is uh, a text window on the left-hand side, uh, but they can also navigate uh, through the book uh, by means of a concept map uh, on the right-hand side. So see, they see all the different uh, relationships between the concepts that are treated uh, within the course. And at the bottom, there's also a learning path with which they can go through the whole topic, and there are several topics within the course, and they can read it uh, just uh, the same as they would read a book. In the EO4Geo project, we use this tool in a similar way to create these concepts and the relationships and the descriptions, but for the purpose of using them within other tools and within the products of our project. Uh, we also make use of the ability of the Living Textbook to export the content of the concepts and also create the whole content collaboratively with uh, a big group of experts that can together create the content of these concepts. I will now show you how this works for our education in our faculty. Let us take the example of uh, digital image classification. I go to this specific concept here and you see that the living textbook zooms in into that specific concept. And I can read the description of digital image classification as a concept. I see uh, some introduction, explanation, an explaining picture, and also uh, a practical use case. So uh, this can be contained in the description of each concept, and it also shows uh, from which learning path uh, this is derived. I can also go to other concepts, and then it will automatically zoom into that specific part of uh, the concept map and I can read the description just like I do uh, in a book. Now let's have a look how this works out for the body of knowledge in our EO4GEO project. Let's take the example of spatial data infrastructures as a concept. You can see in the concept map that this is a subconcept of organizational and institutional aspects of TI science and Earth observation. You can also see that spatial data infrastructures have subconcepts such as policies, funding, governance. And here on the left hand side you see the description of this concept which has been entered by experts of the project. So you see a general description and you see the external references that have been used for this. Next you see the skills that are needed to master this concept or parts of it. And these skills are also used within the other tools and products of the eo 4 geo project. And finally, I briefly show you how we create concepts. So let's suppose I want to create a subconcept of SDIs here. What I will do is to go to the add functionality here. And let's suppose I want to add um, a concept that is about next generation SDIs. I will just put in the title with the code that we use and a short description here in the definition. And you can see that. Uh, this is text that I have prepared. I put it here and I save it here. And the text is there now and I have to just refresh uh, the concept map. And now you see that the concept I have just entered is part of the concept map. So it is a sub-concept of spatial data infrastructures. So this is in very brief how we use the body of knowledge to create concepts and to view them and to use them in other tools of our project. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Rob. Uh, and we are looking forward to um, have you as a discussant at the end. Thank you. Uh, now we'll go to the next, um, uh, to our next uh, speaker, Aida. Uh, let me see how I can stop sharing. Okay. So it's Aida. Uh, I'm going to explain how we can take benefit of the content created in the, um, in the body yeah. of knowledge. Just wait one moment, uh, Aida, yeah, yeah. because I think that uh, it's a bit slow today, the connection. And it takes I can, time to... I cannot see it. Yeah, yeah, because it's not... Uh, 
it happens. <laughs> Forgive me then. Um, uh, can you share it from your side? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you share it maybe from your side to save time because um, uh, for some reason my PC is, is loading uh, and for the moment I'm not able to show something. Okay, do you see it? Maybe some of the other participants can confirm because at I the moment it. my screen is frozen. Perfect. Okay, yes. please go on, Aida. So, as I was saying, I'm Aida, I'm going to explain how we use the content in the body of knowledge from the tools that uh, were already introduced by some of the speakers. First of all, I want to introduce the Occupational Profile Tool, which allows companies and public institutions to define uh, prototypical job offers, which are known as Occupational Profiles. With this uh, geographic information and uh, Earth Observation Occupational Profiles defined in the tool, we will have a collection of the most demanded knowledge and skills in the sector. Another tool we developed is the Job Offer Tool, which can be used by recruiters to define job offers based on previously defined occupational profiles. And also with this tool, we will have uh, an idea of the most demanded knowledge and skills by the market. So this is how it looks, uh, an occupational profile and, and a, jo a job offer. Uh, they, they, these occupational profiles and job offers are defined by knowledge and skills, which are respectively bo body of knowledge concepts and skills uh, linked to that concept. This is the detailed view of an occupational profile, and here we can see the details uh, the title, the description, which knowledge and which skills and also which transverse skills are needed to perform this prototypical uh, task. Another tool I would like to introduce is the curriculum design tool, which allows us to define educational offers uh, by academia and training providers uh, based also on the body of knowledge. And with this list of, of educational offers defined, we could explore the most offered knowledge and skills. Uh, this is the editing view of an educational profile. Uh, and we see here that we can have four levels of granularity. So we can, and it's fully customizable, so we can define a big variety of educational offers and training offers. So, for example, we can reuse a uh, book content, the body of knowledge content in uh, in some of the fields here to define the educational offer. For example, this description here comes from the spatial data infrastructure concept that was previously shown. In, in all our tools, you can access this book visualizer and you can search for the information that you require. And once you find the concept that you would like to use, you can open it and reuse its content. Uh, this graph here in the right, it's in the left, sorry, it's uh, interactive and uh, you can navigate through the different subconcepts, superconcepts, and see all the relations there. So this is a detailed view of an educational offer, which consists of a course and five lectures. And uh, here you can click in each of these lectures and see what information do they have. For example, here uh, we see that they have uh, two book annotated concepts, uh, spatial data infrastructures and coordination and organization structure. So every time we reuse content from the book, these concepts get linked to that content and uh, we can use them in the next tool to compare. So this is the block matching tool where which we can use to compare different resources that are, are annotated with the book. Everybody can access it and it can also compare external resources uh, which are book annotated. So for example, um, a candidate could 
annotate his curriculum vitae and find which job offers are best matching with her curriculum vitae. Or also we, can, we could rank educational offers according to a given occupational profile. So this is the example that I was telling before. For example, we have this occupational profile, which is called Expert on, on Integration of Copernicus Space Data into SDIs. And we can rank here the educational offers that we have previously defined. And we see, for example, that this Management B1 Spatial Data Infrastructures uh, has 47% of matching concepts and skills. With this tool, we can get a detail of the matching with these graphs. And we see, for example, that the, the upper, the top concepts are common between both resources. And at the bottom, the ones on the left are only present in the occupational profile. And the ones on the right are only present in the educational offer. So we could say we could see which concepts do we need to learn to feel to fulfill that occupational profile, for example. And um, that's all for my part. Should I pres still present, Margarita? Uh, Aida, excuse me, but uh, it seems that Margarita lost connection. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, we wait her to reconnect. Uh, this can take some some short minutes. I think she will reconnect reconnect very shortly. Uh, hello, I'm back. Yes. I'm sorry, it was just uh, my the WebEx uh, application has frozen, but I'm back. Uh, thank you for waiting. And Aida, have you finalized the? Yes. Web? Yes. Perfect. Okay, then you can continue, um, Andreas, and then we can close and uh, start the Q&A with the participants for 10 minutes. Andreas, ah, the floor okay. is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, may I also share? Oh, there is, uh, this, it is shared already by Aida, so I will continue with that. Thank you, Aida. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is from uh, for the plan and the training action for test and validation for of the EO4GO strategy. So since EO4GO aims to close the skills gap between the supply and demand of education and training in earth observation and uh, geographical information, the method developed in the project should also be, uh, be tested and this is done by uh, training actions. Uh, the analysis of the training actions could give us the uh, uh, ability to see if the learning obje objectives are achieved and uh, if uh, the EO for GEO method is effective. So, uh, for this reason, uh, we have a bucket of uh, training actions, uh, uh, come as workshop mainly and seminar and uh, webinars. Uh, due to COVID-19 issue, but also have summer schools and uh, thesis. And this comes from a variety of providers, including uh, academia and uh, vocational education training institutes, as well as industry, SMEs and uh, authorities. Uh, if I may um, uh, make a uh, sketch of the target groups, you may see that we have a uh, uh, target group for the university sectors, students, academic teachers, uh, data scientists for observation and geographical information, as well as technicians and assistants in this field. On the other hand, we have the municipal and the regional authorities, and especially city planners, and environmental officers, managers, green planners, and uh, climate adaptation and mitigation coordinators. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so we have to identify yeah, real world problems, describe them and see how they can be solved using the geographical information and observation techniques during the learning processes. As Milva said previously, we have three subsectors, integrated applications, smart cities and climate change. You see the, the proposed uh, selected training actions that start to be implemented now. Uh, for integrated applications, we have uh, an action about landslides and cultural heritage sites. Also, uh, an action is devoted to agro-monitoring system to support regional decision making. Uh, land use change monitoring is also important, as well as uh, landslides uh, documentation. Uh, finally, there is an action about object recognition uh, through machine learning. Uh, in uh, smart city uh, training actions are devoted to heat islands and city planning. Uh, 
as well as urban uh, green structure and quality of life or ecosystem services. Uh, finally, the climate change action, which is uh, the action that uh, I, uh, I am involved, includes uh, air quality monitoring and management as workshop and webinar as well, uh, CO2 budget and solar protection, uh, potential maps for uh, municip at the municipal level, uh, also, epidemics is a uh, quite hot topic nowadays, so early warning for disease epidemics at regional level uh, is uh, also included as an action. And finally, uh, urban greenery management. The actions are expected to uh, take place from December 2020 uh, until summertime. Uh, so you see that there are different actions. Uh, you will find all the information about the forthcoming events in the year for Geo website, and of course, you are all invited to participate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andreas, and thank you all for your presentations. Uh, I think the time is uh, is at the end. Uh, we have one minute, but we I, we, need, we have still uh, three four regions, um, public administrations that might want to comment and uh, interact with you. Um, therefore, I would like to give the floor um, first to our regions, um, especially the ones who participated in the questionnaire regarding the lack of skills in their administrations. Um, how, how, how did you view the tools uh, and training material? Um, are, they, are, are they of value for the organization? Is it something um, uh, that you will use? Do you have any questions from the developers? Uh, the floor is yours. You can uh, send a message in chat or raise your hand or take the floor immediately. <laughs> okay, maybe I... Yes, Andre, sure. Maybe I will start. I think that we could uh, uh, change this, uh, this this question and uh, I'd like to um ask our uh, our our guests and our experts uh, uh, if they based on our presentation and uh, our plans what we gonna to uh, going to achieve can you suggest can suggest us um, use of uh, some kind of tools you know what i mean you, we we are we are based on the some uh, some uh, some two isa projects and we are just uh, just wondering how uh, which which tool will support the use of this uh, of this uh, of these uh, activities maybe you can be more concrete on which kind of activities you you refer to uh, uh, of course if a developer has a has a comment on this uh, you, you can take the floor but I for think... example our first activity is connected with uh, with uh, some landscape monitoring Mm -hmm. And we wonder uh, which tool will, would provide some, uh, I don't know, some uh, interest, some link, some uh, some improve of these uh, activities. Yeah, if we're talking about the training action, uh, there will be a dedicated, uh, I think there will be a workshop, so it's going to be for quite some time, not a simple webinar, about uh, the the basics the, the the problem and how you can deal with that i mean this is a uh, educational tool that uh, uh, you give you it gives you all the methodology to to apply it in in uh, in uh, some of your cases as well so maybe martina is speaking if i may, may add to what andras say I, I would say on the one uh, one hand side you can use our training activities uh, for your uh, for your uh, employees to for just for them to upskill or reskill or f learn about new methods that you would like to use in your project but on the other hand we have also earth observation um, tools uh, we have a platforms uh, developed by our uh, partners vito and for example jupiter jupiter notebook or other uh, other tools that you can use uh, to process the data so you you can choose between tools to uh, up, uh, upscale uh, skills of your employees and learn new things new algorithms but on the other hand you can also use earth observation tools just to implement uh, the work or the task that you would like to do in your project 
Okay, thank you. Does this answer your question, Andre? Okay, perfect. But then, uh, anyway, I will share the presentations and then you may have a, a bilateral um, a, a, a contact uh, with uh, individual developers. Uh, and just maybe, questions. Margarita, to add also, uh, during the training activities, you will learn uh, about the Earth observation tools developed by EO4GEO partners. So how to use them. Perfect. Okay. Uh, can I have uh, one yes, question? Yes, Adam, please, please. Yes, I checked the online tools. They are very interesting, but I'm not sure if, uh, for example, job of a tool uh, will be sufficient for employees to describe their needs. Uh, on the other side, job seekers using occupational profile tool might have problems with matching uh, this with the real market offers. So my question is, what is your idea to connect this tool with a uh, real market job offers? Now, uh, currently we only have uh, job offers created by our partners, but of course, if this increases uh, and tomorrow that we will release the, the tools, and more and more recruiters and are adding their offers there, then we could have a, a better idea of the skills and, and knowledge that is demanded. Uh, maybe my question is too detailed, but I don't know how mature the project is. Is only a beta version or you thinking about some links to the offers uh, in the market? Uh, in example, in this kind of profile, you have 30 or 50 offers in Germany and 15 in the United Kingdom, something like that. It will be in the end uh, in the uh, ready product. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, all offers created there are going to be uh, online. I mean, when they register and they are editing a job offer, they can mm -hmm. set if it's public or, uh, or private. And if it's public, everybody that access the tool, uh, they can see it. I see. So you, uh, I am to invite uh, the companies yes, to publish offers in uh, the application, yes, too? Yes, yes, yes. Starting okay. from tomorrow, we will announce the, the tools and encourage uh, companies to use them. Okay, I see. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Adam. Uh, one of our other uh, member regions would like to comment or ask a question. Maybe if I may, uh, just to add, uh, I think it's very important, uh, your question, and just to encourage uh, the external participants to add the offers, because the, the worth, as you notice, the, no, the worth of the tool will be in the database. Mm. Thank you, Martina. This is a this is a good point indeed. Uh, okay, uh, then you can write me in the chat for uh, I see other other member regions that are present. But if you feel comfortable, you can write also in the chat, uh, sharing your co your comments, questions with us. Uh, in the registrations, we've uh, noticed that we have um, um, a big number of uh, universities joining the webinar. So, uh, and also our member universities. Um, I now give the floor to you uh, for sharing your views regarding the presentations and the initiatives. You can take the floor right away uh, by unmuting yourself. And of course, to, to any other participant. Otherwise, uh, I think that we can close the meeting. <laughs> we are also seven minutes uh, uh, delayed. Uh, okay. Um, uh, would you like uh, to share um, more comments, uh, Martina, Aida, uh, Rob, and Andreas, as the developers of the tools? Uh, yes, Margarita. Um, so uh, here's also an invitation to. Um, universities and actually other uh, uh, 
uh, parties, so regions also, mm -hmm. uh, to get involved uh, in uh, even improving, uh, let's say, the body of knowledge, because we are constantly working on it. And we still also welcome uh, people to uh, add um, information to it. So it, it is a, a two way function, actually, you can learn. Uh, and that actually also uh, relates a bit to the, the first question by Andre, I think. Uh, so uh, if it is about land monitoring or, or any other application, uh, you can also find these concepts uh, within the body of knowledge. So you can learn from it. Uh, and students can learn from it. You can use it also for your students to, to um, let's say, study. Uh, but uh, you can also um, be involved in improving uh, the actual creation of information in it. Okay. It's an open invitation. Okay, I think uh, we can close uh, with two last reminders, three last reminders, actually. Um, the first one is that uh, uh, you can uh, contact the developers and EO4GO partners uh, for the project. If you have any questions after, after the webinar, uh, we will be more than pleased to reply to you. Tomorrow is the official release of the tool, so we invite you to test them and uh, uh, share the experience with, with your partners. Uh, and um, uh, I have shared with you uh, the questionnaire regarding the, this webinar. Uh, please uh, fill, this, uh, fill in the, the questionnaire and send it back uh, to me. Uh, and then finally, uh, we are looking forward to welcome you again to our next Nereus webinar on the 18th of November uh, for our uh, other project, Impressive. Uh, there will be a follow-up of this webinar with all presentations included. Uh, and um, we are looking forward to see you again. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Martina.